Unpopular opinion. In the draft, don't worry about positions. Just take the best player. I'm going to explain that here on Locked on Jaguars. You are Locked on Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for joining us here on Locked On Jaguars. We're at your team every day. We thank you for making us your first listen. I am Tony Wiggins, the host of the Locked On Jaguars podcast, where you can also find it on YouTube. That is Locked On Jaguars on the YouTube page. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and then hit the bell so you receive notifications each and every time we drop an episode. And then wherever you listen to your audio podcast, make sure you tap into that location every single day so you do not miss an episode of the Locked On Jaguars podcast. Today's show is sponsored by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Also, shout out to the everydayers for joining us here every single day. You can be an everyday too if you join us every single day. So it's an unpopular podcast, I can tell you already. Uh, not unpopular with who's going to listen to it because the everyday is always going to show up, but unpopular in terms of the opinion. I can I get fans, okay? So what we're going to talk about is uh, my opinion that you take a talent-first approach to the draft. Uh, that needs to be addressed in free agency, which we'll hit that in segment two. And then re-ranking drafts is the dumbest thing I've ever seen because it doesn't factor in something that is extremely critical about what happened to those rookies. It's crazy to do it after one year, but it's really crazy to do it without acknowledging where those players went and assuming that they do that if they went somewhere else. So we'll talk about that. Um, talent first approach. I, I get fans. I, I know how how it is. And uh, there's sometimes when your biggest need also lines up with uh, exactly what you need to be going out and pursuing, mainly quarterback. Really good franchise quarterbacks are never in free agency. If you're going to get one, you're going to draft him. The Jaguars have committed to Trevor Lawrence. I still believe Trevor Lawrence is a very good quarterback and and worthy of them giving that commitment to him. So we don't want to sit here and act like we're going to cancel Trevor Lawrence because Things haven't gone quite the way everyone thought that they were going to go. I think the Jaguars were right to commit to him, and I think they're right to still be committed to him uh, moving forward. Uh, I don't want people to confuse that with me saying there's no rush in uh, giving him his extension. It's not, really. I mean, you can't lose him. He ain't going to get pissed off. Let him go out and play. Then give him the extension because you never know what's going to happen just because you're committed to it, just because you think things are going to happen. You never know what could happen with Trevor. You never really know. I mean, once I saw what happened with Andrew Luck, man, I'm like anything can happen to anybody. Right. So you never you never really know. So there's no reason to rush into that if you don't have to. But that being said, the quarterback position is the only one that you should if you don't have one when you when you go into the draft, since that's the only place you can literally find them right like a future quarterback that's going to be on your team for 10 to 12 years the only place you're going to find them uh that's it, it takes a premium i mean it, it, you you really have to be intentional when it comes to that position with non-quarterbacks especially if you have one i think the draft should be all about drafting the most talented players regardless of and my reason for thinking that is pretty pretty simple um you can address other needs um in free agency you can dress you can address needs and get instant impact and know exactly what you're buying right see with the draft when you draft players you're drafting guys and they're wrapped in gift gift boxes and you don't know exactly who and what they are until they get into the arena of the nfl right so it's like you got to peel the layers and layers off and you peel the bubble wrap off and say okay this is what we bought let's see if it works in the nfl it's like going shopping uh, and you're not putting anything in a bag. And in fact, you come out in the morning for Christmas and you see exactly what's under that tree because you have uh, more evidence. So you've seen guys play in the NFL 
um, you know exactly what you're getting. You can vet them. You know, you can understand who they are as professionals. You can look at their injury history in the NFL. So it's easier for me to cherry pick and plug a need. You're like, no, I need this. Bang, I'm going to get this. like the transfer portal. And I hate comparing that to that, but that's exactly what it is. You know exactly what you're getting. You've seen the production. College, it's more sometimes there are guys that can come in and fit in. And, and usually good teams are real good at that because, one, they're good teams. Two, their needs are pretty defined, but they know exactly what it, what they're looking for. And in college, you can go out and get a dude that was like a superstar uh, at one place and say, here, this is all I need you to do. I need you to do this. This is what you did well. Brian Branch comes to mind. OK, he comes to mind. Uh, you just perfect for your your program, perfect for your situation, and you can just take them and plug them in. Normally, that's when you're picking where the Chiefs are picking and where those really good teams like Baltimore are picking. And, and one, those teams are picking late because they're good because they have picked well before, so they have a track record. They have a lot of continuity in their program. They have an identity. They know exactly who they are. When you know who you are, you know exactly what you need. And combine that with the fact that you're obviously good over a long period of time. So that means you've done a real good job of identifying what your needs are. The draft should be take the most talented player. And, and, and I'm saying that to say this, too. We often forget that if you don't pick them, you got to play against them. So whatever it was that you needed and you took a player that played the position that you need, what if he has to block a kid that's better and you didn't take that kid because that kid, you had somebody in his position already. So I don't need him. Right. But then you take a dude that can't block the guy who you pick behind him or is going to have a hard time with it. And that's what we don't get. And then all we do when we do that, if, if you're a team picking in the teams and you're just constantly drafting for need, need, need without regard to talent, you know what you're doing, right? You're funneling that those really good, talented players to the teams that are picking behind you that are better than you. It's common sense. Why would you do that? Don't keep giving. Don't we keep giving the Baltimore Ravens uh, this little pass rusher or that big, big, strong, physical defensive tackle because you know oh, we got you know we got Foley Fadakazi. We're good at that position. And then whoever's picking behind you, since you're a fringe playoff team, you didn't make it. You missed it by one game. Those playoff teams are going to be like, okay, we'll take it. Bang. And then he goes to Houston. You feel me now? And then he goes to Baltimore. And then he goes to Kansas City. And then he doesn't have to play a whole bunch right away. And then he goes to Buffalo. He doesn't have to play a whole bunch right away. But in year two, and this is why I'm going to tell you re-ranking drafts is dumb after one year. In year two or year three, here comes this superstar that has been in this program, that has been round winning, that understands. And now the guys in front of him have gotten old. And now this dude's going to whoop on you for the next 10 years. That's why you can't do it. You're helping the ops. Get those talented dudes off that board, man, and stop letting these dudes just slip and slide all the way to these good teams that you already can't beat. It doesn't make sense. And until and the reason why teams do this, I'm going to tell you why they draft for immediate need. Because it's CYA. It's cover your you-know-what, and it's I got to save my job. You notice the teams that draft really, really well are the coaches and the GMs that aren't worried about their job security because they're going to do what's fiscally responsible for the franchise overall, not just what's going to save their job next year. I got to make a pick so this guy can get all of these stats and I can go, ooh, look what he did. And, and you're nine and eight and you're not back into the playoffs. That's the problem. We got to get rid of this losing mentality because when you have it, you know who benefits from it? The people that you're trying to beat. I'm going to tell you why uh, free agency is super important and why these talent procurements, while they have to have their own identity, they also have a chance to work together. I'm going to talk about the importance of free agency. I'll do it in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars. Man, I got to tell you about DoorDash, man. Wife was out of town. Didn't feel like cooking because I didn't feel like cleaning up the house. Um, for the big game that we we just had you know with kansas city beating san francisco i had two boys over here or two men my sons and man we needed some food and we had been sipping so nobody could drive and guess what we did we called doordash and bang food was here at halftime and we ate and ate and ate until the point where i'm surprised we didn't fall asleep because doordash brought that food hot brought that food 
uh, immediately with profession and you know a professional uh manner and 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 i don't live in a place that's easy to find doordash will find you we ought to send doordash to find people that owe child support because they'll find anybody hey so what you want to do man is get doordash uh your door to more head to the doordash app to get everything you need delivered that's right doordash man football season may be over but basketball is in full effect and you can eat food while you watch hoops too you can also get your groceries and get dinner for tonight groceries for the week all of that stuff doordash is the absolute truth man make sure you tap in and get in on the doordash app segment two here on locked on jaguars i, I say it's an unpopular show like i said it's not because i don't think people are gonna listen but I just think a whole bunch of people are going to disagree and that's fine that's fine this is not to change your mind this is just to show you my perspective and um when you look back at these drafts you can go to drafthistory.com you can look back you can look at you can look by team by year by position you can do all of that i really want y'all to really really since everybody's into the data right go back and look and see if what i'm saying is the truth just go back and i know you won't know every team and what every team needed but if you go back you at least know what the jaguars had and what they didn't have go back and you can remember what the jaguars needed over the last three or four years or or, or so and then or maybe five years look at what they needed and what they picked and if you want to even do it and make your head pop go look at the last 10 years what they needed and what they didn't need and why they didn't take this guy and you're going to be so angry at yourself that the reason why the Jaguars didn't take this Hall of Famer is because they had a dude who you probably forgot everything he's ever done. That's the thing that stings more than anything. Yeah, man, we we, we ain't going to take that that tight end because we don't really need no tight end, man. We, we you know, we, we had a pretty decent tight end. He was OK. So we filled this other position and, and you can rationalize it and explain it all you want to. And I and I know that there's a way you could do it. But there's no reason why on 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 earth uh, that's good enough for you to explain to me why a guy who's having a yellow jacket or a gold jacket put on him was on the board and you didn't take him. If you missed, if you if you misdiagnosed it, if you didn't think he was that good, fine, no harm, no foul, because nobody's perfect. But if you thought he was good and you say, well, we had a more pressing need somewhere else, and then that dude didn't even finish his contract here, and that other guy has played 10 years and it looks like he's headed to Canton, that's not a good reason. That's not a good reason to do that. And every team misses. Good teams, bad teams, they all do. I don't want to sit here and I know the first thing somebody's going to do is they say, you had like all oh, good teams, all, all the Patriots missed on a lot of draft picks and they won a Super Bowl. Yeah, they won six, by the way. But uh, sure, they did. So I'm going to tell you, I know that they missed. I know that they missed. But the Patriots had an identity. That's why they have a dynasty. When you don't have an identity, you need to draft the best players and build your identity around the talent. The same way Ryan Nielsen said yesterday, it's it's player over scheme. It's the same philosophy. Put the player, the scheme and the identity will show themselves up. They'll pop their they'll pop their head right out of the ground if you have the real talented player there and he's causing all of this disruption. But when you sit here and, and look at and the same thing will happen, it'll work itself out. Just get the best players you possibly can. You can't get quarterbacks if you already have one because then you got to do it over there, standing over there. Part of the quarterback position is he's in control of the game. It's his ball. You don't take it from him. It's like a pitcher in baseball. It's his. On his day that he starts, it's his until you say it isn't, right? Football is just like that. He, he Football player, a quarterback is, is so important to be the dude that sets the he's the catalyst for the franchise so having another dude just like him or close in talent doesn't really benefit you very much unless you're planning on him getting hurt right so you don't build a team based on planning on a guy getting injured especially when you're talking about starters but when you don't have an identity you start just like ryan nielsen said you start with the talent you start with that and then everything else you build it around it. You build, If you're trying to establish an identity, wouldn't you want to establish an identity building it around the best players you possibly could? Yeah. So why is free agency so important? Because if you do right in free agency, 
And I'm not saying it's more important than the draft. I think the draft is actually the most important thing. But in, in this little cocoon where we're looking at just, we need an offensive lineman. We need a center. We need, okay. So if you need it that bad to the point where you're willing to almost ignore everything else, don't you have to be more exact in where you spend your money or your resources? Go get a proven dude. Go out there in free agency and fill the need at center and guard by getting Robert Hunt or Damian Lewis or Lloyd Cushenberg. Guys, you know that can play because you've seen it. That's if you've evaluated them and believe that they're that good. If you don't, then you don't. Don't pay them. Then you might have to draft a guy. In there. But if you're drafting a guy in the draft, instead of getting one of those guys, that means you think that guy's better, right? So you're still going with the talent. You're still going with the talent. That's where they're combined, but they're separate. Things can have their own identity, right? But then when you combine them, they're great. Spaghetti. You cook the sauce in one pan and the noodles in another. And at some point, some people like to mix them. Even if you don't like them totally mixed, eventually you're going to put them on the same plate and they're going to be touching each other, right? Right. It's the same thing. I don't know why people have this tendency to want to skip past the draft when it or skip past free agency and automatically think all the needs need to be addressed in the draft with the exception of the one position that is never available in free agency. And that is the quarterback spot. You have to focus. You have to be intentional and deliberate in the draft when it comes to approaching the quarterback position, because you ain't never going to find a good one in free agency because teams don't let them go. You can almost say that same thing about left tackles. But the thing is, is that's a developmental position that sometimes guys end up turning out to be Deion Dawkins turned out to be way better. There was a point where Deion Dawkins and Cam Robinson were like the same guy. In fact, Cam Robinson's contract extension looked a lot like Deion Dawkins's contract extension. Deion Dawkins now took another step and he's like on an all pro level. I mean, Deion Dawkins is like really, really good. Right. He ain't Trent Williams, but he's really, really good. Cam hasn't gone there yet. So sometimes you can find those spots because guys are still developing you ain't gonna get see that with a quarterback so much you, you won't that raw talent jordan love notwithstanding look they developed him and they got him and they picked him and they developed him and that's a very very good example also they had aaron Rodgers. they didn't go grocery shopping on an empty stomach they went with a full stomach they said we're going to take this dude right here because we know three or four years from now we're going to need him and everybody went all up in arms talking about they ain't, they ain't help Aaron. Aaron left and they went right to where Aaron couldn't take him because this kid had developed and they had built their team around him. That's just the bottom line. Some people think they should have been in an NFC championship game. And now they're sitting there with a glorious future ahead of them with a dude that's going to play for the next 12 years. There's some teams that get it. That There's some teams that have never been out of, without a quarterback in my lifetime. And Green Bay is like one of them. How do you think they got that way? They did the same thing when they took Rodgers when they had Far. You know why they could do that? Because they had an identity and the rest of the team was already built. I think you could be active in free agency without building your team like a bunch of renegades, like a bunch of mercenaries. Because all you have to do is just sign three or four guys. Three or four impact players. A center, a guard, a defensive tackle, and a corner. So instead of spreading all of this love everywhere, give a lot of money to a bunch of proven players. That's four people. That's it. They ain't all got to break the bank. You ain't all. You ain't got to make them all the highest paid player in the league. But now you're cooking with grease now because when you get in the draft, you say, okay, these little needs got filled. And the draft doesn't end on day one. Day two is a real good place to find a whole bunch of starters. And then even day three, you're going to be able to get some people that's going to really, really help you. But that first pick, I want the baddest SOB that's sitting out there waiting to get chosen. I'm, it's like NBA All-Star Weekend. You choose the baddest one you see. You, if you're that dude, you ain't gotta, you ain't gotta settle. And you don't have to settle. So it's always counterintuitive to me when a team actually settles. They settle and 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 take a less of a player because they're worried about positions i think when you worry about positions what you're really worried about is your job that's what it is and in some rare cases it lines up it lines up when the position the player or the position of need and this is why you can always move down in the draft 
He said, yeah, you know what? That's a good guy. But guess what? We can go down 10 spots, get another pick. And you say, well, Wig, what's the difference between doing that and just taking the guy that you want anyway? Because what happens is you get more bites at the apple. And what I mean by that, you get a chance to add another quality player to your team. So it's a two for one is what it is. I don't need that guy. But guess what? We could use him. But there's a whole bunch of dudes that we like that we like for us that fit our identity. I want more bites of that. So I'm going to move down a couple of spots. I'm going to get the guy that fills the need, and then I'm going to get two other guys. Maybe I'll get a guy at that guy's position that we don't think he's too much better than the other dude. That's how the game is played, and that's how good teams do it. And hopefully all of y'all that are disagreeing with me right now that the Jaguar fans will say, well, we might as well try it or think that way because whatever we've been doing haven't been working, hasn't been working, and you certainly haven't been doing what I suggest right now. So no time better than – right now to give that a shot i'm gonna tell you why re-ranking drafts is the stupidest thing i've ever seen uh after one season but people do it anyway this is why i told you i was gonna do i should have done a whole series on surviving the off season i'll tell you what i mean by that in just a second here on locked on jaguar nissan 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 that's it man if you are ready to Go out and be an adventurous person. And are you the kind that likes to push things a little bit further, on-road or off-road? Our, friend, our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The, two, the 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and great escapes. You can be cool and be efficient at the same time, right? You can look good, but also you can, you know, economically do things the way you need to be doing them and look good and save you some money, right? So gone are the days of connecting your phone, Google Assist, and all of that stuff. You got a 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system built right into the 2024 Rogue. Also, the ne Nissan Pathfinder, if you need a little more room, has a room up to eight, an expansive cargo capacity, and advanced availability uh, for 4x4. With 284 horsepower and up to 6,000 pounds of towing, woo! When adventure calls, the Pathfinder is there to answer. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or the big boy, the Nissan Armada, and go find your next adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. All right, third and final segment here on Locked On Jaguars, where it's your team every day. We always thank you for making us your first listen. I have to remind you that Locked On has created and launched the first national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now, available on the free Fire TV channels app. All right, so we got a lot of redrafts floating around after one season. I'd rather do them after three years, but redrafts floating around after one season. And I get it. It's a fun exercise. I'm not here to turn the lights off. I'm not here like the guy on life when the dudes, all the inmates were sitting there talking about Ray's boom, boom room. And then all of a sudden this dude comes in and says, turn off the light. I don't want to hear nothing about no damn boom, boom room. You know, I, I ain't trying to be that dude, right? While everybody's having fun and trying to navigate through the off season and, and figure out things that they're trying to do from a football perspective, I'm not trying to be Mr. No have fun, but I'm about to be Mr. No have fun, right? I'm about to tell you right now that there's some practices out here that are absolutely stupid and will put you through mental gymnastics that you just don't, they're unnecessary. You don't need to be dealing with it, right? Uh, re redrafting and re-ranking drafts is done. Somebody did one. I ain't going to mention who it is. But I don't even know who it is anyway uh, without looking at it. One, they did the whole first round all over again and there was no Anton Harrison. Anton Harrison was the best offensive lineman in the rookie class, but there's no Anton Harrison. And, and shout out, I know Peter Skoronsky. No, Anton Harrison to me was the best offensive lineman in the class. And the Jaguars got him. Got it. They fell in love with. And on all of the, the, the tapes or the, the videos that you see put out about how bad the Jaguars line is when it looks like they're all chasing people that are chasing Trevor, the one guy that's constantly in front of his dude blocking him is Anton Harrison. He's like, he's just blocking the hell out of the dude and everybody else is 
over here chasing dudes like they done stole something out of a convenience store. He's just in front of his dude blocking him. Just blocking him. It's funny to see it because it's like if he can do that, why everybody else can't do it. But that's a whole nother story. But the thing is, is that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. After one year, you can't tell anything about these rookies. And I'm going to break it down to you real quick. You know, the biggest thing you can't think tell about these rookies, the biggest thing. What situation did they go into? How are they mismanaged? How are they used improperly? That's what you can't tell. I'm not even talking about their teammates. I'm not talking about taking a guy and putting him on a good team and uh, made life easier for him. No, because sometimes if you're surrounded by a bunch of good teammates, you stick out like a sore thumb when you're not good. Ask Luke Fortner. Sometimes when you're, when you're the main culprit, he ain't the only one that's bad on the offensive line, but he's the main culprit. Sometimes the main culprit really, really, really has a light shined on him and, and you can't hide him. So that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about, people that do it right and people that don't do it correctly. What are you bringing them into? What's the program? What's the organization like? What is it? The same things that would make a free agent come in and go, oh, I ain't going over there, man. It ain't serious. W what happens when a kid that doesn't, when he gets drafted, he has no, he has no choice. He has to go to a situation where they're not serious. You think people, when they sit there and look at what's, what's going on with Justin Fields, that folks aren't saying that? Now, there's some people that are around here peacocking because they said the same thing about George, George, Justin Fields when he came out. They, they had doubts about certain things, and those doubts showed up, and they say, see, this is what we saw at Ohio State. Now, I ain't going to argue with those folks, but I am going to, uh, I'm going to magnify the point that there are a lot of people that believe that the Bears, even if they take Caleb Williams, if they don't fix their organization, it doesn't matter who they get. I agree with them. I think the team and the organization, the coaching and the program and all of that stuff, all of the stuff we talked about when we heard Ryan Nielsen talk about identity and who we are and what we want to be. And I think what you bring guys into affects what you see them do. And if that's the case, how can you re-rank guys after one year? especially when you're talking about Bryce Young. I'm not here to defend Bryce Young, but all I'm going to tell you is the Carolina Panthers as an organization is a dumpster fire. If this kid was, he was the number one pick, some people say, okay, should have went number one, maybe should have went number five. But now to not even have him in the first round because he played for a dumpster fire of an organization that my grandmother's friends her and her friends could have had more separation than the wide receivers had. The offensive line was, that might be the only one that's worse than Jacksonville's. You see how weird that is? That's crazy to even think about doing that. And if you know anything about team building in football, you can't do a redraft after one year. You can do it, but the, the people who actually have to make the choices in the picks, okay, maybe C.J. Stroud who does go first. But the other, the rest of it, they ain't going to sit there and redraft this based on what they saw after one year. They're going to take a sample size. And I know you're saying, well, what's the difference between that and what they did in college? There's a body of work. And then they don't draft people based on what they saw them do in college. They draft people on the evaluation process. When they go to the combine, when they go to the senior bowl, when they do the one-on-one -on -one workouts, the film, the tape, they look at it. They don't look at box score. They're not box score scouts. You tell me right now that Jameer Gibbs would have had the same year he had if he played for the Bears. You tell me right now that Jameer Gibbs would have, would have had the same year he had and you would have felt the same way about him if he played for the Saints. You tell me that Jameer Gibbs, you would have felt the same way about Jameer Gibbs if he played for the Patriots who didn't have a quarterback and didn't have competent offensive people. No, you wouldn't. You absolutely would not. So it's just ridiculous because it doesn't take it. There are a lot more organizations. I'm going to give you, give you something here, uh, some game for the weekend. It's not just about missing on players in the draft. There are a lot more organizations where the player has bad luck and he misses on the team that picks him more than the people who draft misses on the guy that they picked. There are more players ruined by bad organizations then there are organizations ruined by taking bad players there you go i'm gonna give that to you for the weekend and make you understand why i think talent first approach is the best way to go 
needs uh, the the needs the big most glaring needs i think you need to go where you can make the most sure pick that's going to help that glaring need i think that's where you get proven players in free agency and hopefully you don't have to get but three free agencies or three free agents three or maybe four because if you got more than four glaring needs then you do need to be taking the best player in the draft anyway because you don't need to be cherry picking but if you only got four or less address them where you know they're going to get where you're sure you are certain that the guy you're going to pay because you're going to pay him more money because he's not a he's not a rookie you make sure that that guy can play and bring him in and post him up right there and in a draft where it's a little bit more guesswork based on your scouts based on based on all of those i don't think it's guesswork but i'm, I'm just saying i just it's a phrase i use where it's based on a whole bunch of other things where you don't know if you're going to be right then the best thing you can do the best thing you can do is just take the most talented player you can regardless of position except for quarterback that's my logic and that's my reason for it you guys make sure you tap back in every single day here on locked on jaguars where it's your team every day we thank you for making us your first living have a nice weekend your first listen not your first living have a nice weekend